welcome everyone to another amazing episode of Drink Why You Think. I'm your host, Kenji. He is and I'm Matthew. There he is. Once again, here we are without sponsors. I'm not sure. Do we need to make people make you do the sponsorship? You like doing it, though, don't you? Well, yeah, but I it was pointed out to me that we didn't tell people where to send the beer. <laughs> well, we had other people send us beer, and it started with, hey, we'd like to send you beer. We know we can contact you via email, via YouTube as a comment, but maybe we should do yeah. it. If you'd like to sponsor Drink While You Think, please send beer to the Atlanta Technology Village, 3423 Piedmont Road, Northeast, Atlanta, Georgia, 30305. That's Atlanta Technology Village. Send it to Acuity. Uh, Matthew, Kenji, whoever will take it, please send us beer. (laughs) The good news is... um... We tend to find a way to we, we, we tend to find a way to always find good beer. There's lots of good beer around, but it's nice if other people send us stuff from your part of the world. Oh yeah. Yeah, so, send us local beer, not like, like, like yeah. your local beer, like your local stuff. So what do you like? What do you like drinking? So, um, what are you drinking today? I I I do not even though I'm a stout drinker, I don't drink this often or like really infrequently. So I am trying the Guinness Stout Draft. Okay. Um, So it's like the, the, it may be just the same thing. It's just branded differently, but um, I'm drinking that today. What are you drinking? I think that's kind of up your alley in some sense, but. um... Yeah, I'm not a huge Guinness fan. I'm I'm never, it's never like, even though I like stouts, like the one that's most popular, I don't like love. It's kind of sucks. Okay. Well, that's too bad. Um, I'm drinking uh the tucker brewing company tucktoberfest right it's october nice. it's october and um technically i think in germany oktoberfest is actually in september however seems about right good fall beer it's a marzen you know, cheers to you matthew i'm gonna pour it into you go ahead and have a sip i gotta check this out my wife went and got me some fancy that's a, that's not a wine glass that's a beer fancy beer glass okay oh let's see how that pours Mm, man you, you just have the i mean look at that look at that that's just beautiful i'm gonna spill it you're jealous i can't help it you know you're jealous you know what's cool about this beer too matthew um I, you and i went to this brewery great brewery over in tucker um yep. hold on let me get a quick sip mm, really really good beers the cool thing is the founder of tucker brewing she just joined our local Atlanta EO chapter. That's really so cool. I'm very excited about that. Yep. Not, not as excited about the fact that my neighbor decided to blow his yard right when we were starting to drink while you think, but such is the way that things go. So cheers. Yep. Um, cheers, man. Maybe a little quick anyway today, just with the lawn guys, person next door, and also the fact that I was telling Matthew, I think I've lost a pint of blood to the mosquitoes already sitting out here. Um, no sympathy here with that backyard view, dude. I know. It's nice out here. I had to get outside. Uh, if it does get too noisy with that, let me know. Um, okay, I'll let you know. Okay. Um, I kind of had one theme today. I want to touch on a couple of points, but the theme really is to other firm owners, when you should step out of your firm to get kind of perspective on things, right? Um, and I say this just because we just did this. Uh, I'm not shaking my head because of that because I'm shaking it for how loud the, the revving of the engines are. It's not very bad. You, you have a great mic, dude. We, oh, great that's, why we invested, that's why we invest in the mics. So. Well, we keep, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. Um, so think about the ways that we as firm owners step out of our firm to get perspective. And I think the first way is like we get drawn out externally by things like conferences. And we've talked about conferences um but i guess maybe i was just going to go through like how we think about the conferences which ones we plan on hitting we just had this discussion internally which ones are meaningful for us um are you certain that's not too loud certain it's it's actually great okay i'm glad it's good for y'all because wow <clears throat> sounds like a harley davidson motorcycle convention next door it's really faint in the background with leaf blowers 
I'm gonna have to take over from you though, because it's really bothering you clearly. Yeah, I'll, I'll deal with it. Um, so conference, why don't you get? I mean, what are the what are the ones we're planning on hitting in the next twelve months? You'd say. Uh, well, I think chronologically or in the order that I like them. <laughs> go whatever, go whatever you want to go. Uh, I, the ones that are coming up. So you have Sweet World coming up in October, which is NetSuite's conference. We have PASBA coming up in November. We have what should be uh, QuickBooks Connect coming up in December. And we have ZeroCon coming up in May. Um, I'm sure I'm missing a bunch. Those are our favorite slash preferred. I know Gusto's trying to put on a next conference. Avalara puts on those. Those I think of those as virtual conferences. I don't know if they're going to be in person. They are something. essentially Gusto. Gusto Next will be virtual this year. Um, but in the context that you're talking about, those yeah. those four, um, we don't do as, I mean, we've never been to Sweet World, so that's kind of a new one for us. It'll, but be, the, uh, it'll be my first time to PASBA. You've been to PASBA before, but it'll be, I have a small group at PASBA now, so um, it'll be fun to, to see people and I've never met them in person, so it's kind of crazy. There's the Ensuring Success Conference. I'll be at that one and also in um, Denver. Um, that one, I think, is going to be kind of like Gusto Next, where it's uh, speakers are there present, but everybody else has to attend virtually. Um, so we got, we got an ecom one coming up in, um, I can't remember when it was, but it's in Norfolk, Virginia, it's right outside where our kids are. So yeah. what's that? will be like May ish, I think, May, yeah. June, July. that. That's back half of the calendar. So, which ones do we enjoy them? I get if you had to, if you could only keep three conferences for the year, which would they be for you? Well, if you only if you made me do one, it's ZeroCon, right? ZeroCon, so yeah. I would definitely do that. Uh, you didn't even mention accounting salon, but that's because you guys are too hoity toity and exclusive and you don't okay, let other people yeah. in. Um, but uh, so probably ZeroCon. Then QuickBooks Connect, then then Pasma would be my three. Okay. So, but I haven't been to Pasma yet, so I'm I'm assuming. So. Yeah, I I go ZeroCon, QuickBooks Connect. Um, I'll say behind that one, uh, behind those two, sort of two front runners really. Um, I actually liked AICPA Engage because it's a lot of people were there. Um, and so I want, I want to say that because I want to do ones that anybody could go to, except the price point stinks on Engage. Yep. So if I had to get a third one, I'd say either Engage, you could find a way to hack your way in like Scott Scarano did, like we did this year. Um, or I have a good feeling that Gusto next in future years is going to be much better once it's not virtual. So I'll, I'll say those three. Um, our cool. very ways to get perspective. A couple other things that are happening. I'm hearing more and more about people who are starting to I've done a few of these um, kind of almost do meetups, like, right? Like not really conferences. I mean, counting salons, a little bit of that, but uh, Michael Lee's kind of had broken away and done some things. Well, you guys went to Scottsdale one time, right? Yeah, it's Scottsdale. Um, I'm curious about what you guys in Lozanis, if there's going to be any kind of meetups there at all, if that's going to be virtual. Well, we're talking about um, doing some meetups around ZeroCon and QuickBooks Connect for those people. That, that's smart. So around the top two. You know. Go ahead and leverage those and just jump in on there. So mm -hmm. um, there's a few others kind of happening as well, too. John Bly is going to do something. Uh, those guys over at Aprio just bought, was it RSM's old? Um, the Global Network. Yeah. Global Network. So they're going to kind of do something, I think, in November as well. Um, so it'll be interesting. Um, all right. Let's pivot off things from like perspective of getting outside your firm by external things. We started over the past couple of years doing our own things. We've talked a lot about AcuityCon. We didn't talk a lot about it um, with Kristen when she was on and Martin, uh, just because we wanted to spend time with them. But like, we're on the backside of AcuityCon now. I guess I want to talk a little bit why we made that decision to do AcuityCon, like our own kind of conference with all of our team members. Now, I'd say, I don't know that it's for every firm owner. Well, no, no, I shouldn't say that. What do you think? Like, we're, we're sizable. We're 135 team members. Yep. What about if you're five or 10 team members and you're virtual? Should you get together once at least a year? I think, I think so. Um, but uh, I'm saying that knowing that we don't 
like we haven't extended that to our international team members. So, you know, a lot of us are going international now. So, you know, I want to say yes, all in for everybody, but like um, there might be a qualifier there. I haven't really given a lot of thought to the, well, I've given some thought to like when it's right to bring in everybody, everybody, or when it's right to bring in the U S team. So I think it depends now. Um, It's a, it's a hard question we haven't fully thought it all the way through i don't think yeah it's it seemed to make sense for us as a virtual remote firm to kind of get everyone together at least once a year and i'm just trying to think back to earlier years if that would have made sense probably i guess i would encourage firms to think about it like i think really good things happen it's tough it's tough to pull off it can be a little expensive but for us it just i don't know to me it feels much better when we have the whole team in the room, I think his leadership even, to me, it puts pressure on us, good pressure of like, ooh, we got him one time kind of face-to-face. Yep. Like we need to make some very clear statements about where we're going and what we're doing. Um, and I think that's, that's very important. And then just, again, I know I was complaining two episodes ago, like, oh, why do we do this every year? It's so much work and effort. And then as usual, we get there and everyone's there and it's like, this is awesome. This is so great being with everybody. Like, it's just so great seeing everybody. Yep. So, and Definitely. the thing I would do to the other firm owners there is think about, not that you have to do it like we did, but we were trying to give all of our team members what a conference experience was like, right? Not everyone can always go to the, you know, ZeroCon or QBO or QB Connect. So that was kind of our, our way of trying to replicate aspects of that, that given that experience um beyond that like you and i started doing we've done a drink while you think from one of our retreats like you and me um i guess when did we start doing that is that two years ago a year ago i bet it's longer than that it's pre-covid it's pre-covid it's pre-covid we started getting together once a year every other or once or twice a year depends um did you when you were at cherry becker did you ever do like a partner retreat or anything like that or yeah every year there's a partner retreat which i always thought the big big firms do that like um based i assume what you and i did is a lot different than what you guys did on a partner retreat at cherry becker yeah i mean they had as many partners as we have employees so i mean (laughs) yeah so yeah it was kind of like acuity con right from a size perspective Right. Like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know what one thing that's a great thing to bring up though, because one thing we need to think about at CutieCon, um, there was a first time first timers track. Like, so there's like a first time partner session dedicated. Oh, really? We probably need to think about that for CutieCon is like the first timers, like make sure you that might be something we incorporate, like your first time, yeah. like what it's like to be at acuity and stuff like that. Interesting. Well, interesting. That's kind of a good perspective. I hadn't thought about that. Um, Until I realized they're about the same size, um, those two events, the partner retreat at Jerry Beckert and, and acuity gone this year. Like, yeah. I, I hadn't thought about that. And I guess we've kind of done informally whenever we travel to some of the bigger conferences of just getting together and talking about like, hey, in between sessions or back at our Airbnb, kind of talking through things. But I don't know that there's any way, like to me, that's a have to. If you have a business partner, like that's a must. Like you've got to get out of the day-to-day. Like we're pretty good yeah. about every week getting together, but like you've got to get away, like, right? Um, mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to be anything crazy. We just go a little bit north of town or on a little small Airbnb, Airbnb and kind of hang out without, have we ever had an agenda for ours? Not for your or mine, no. <laughs> we had to, when we got the management team together, we had to. Yeah. And not for when Lisa came, we didn't, we didn't have an agenda either. Yeah. So it's our COO. So the two of us plus our COO, which were the really three kind of owners at the time. Yeah. Um, Yeah. No agenda there. Is that a, is is that a bad practice or is that a good practice for bad practice for people in general? Or is that a good practice you think for just specifically to us? I think it's a decent practice if you have less than five people like if you have five people and you're having a, you want it to be kind of unstructured and and you might have some broad goals you think about 
like tackling, but like we've got those in our head right now, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, I think if you have, when you start having management teams in, when you're starting having a 10, 15 person team in, like yeah. it's got to be tight. I think if we had gone into Serenby, which was our management retreat in, in, in um, June, right? If we had gone in there with like a, even a half sketch agenda, I mean, it would have never been as productive as it was. I think having the tight agenda was a, was a must. I agree. I agree. Um, and yeah, and speaking about that, that's kind of the newest addition for us is it's almost for us a quarterly. We kind of take the holidays, busy season a little bit off, um, but are going into the, the busy time. So we take kind of Q4 off a bit just to give people breaks and holidays. But we've kind of determined that we need a quarterly management offsite. We had a discussion at this one most recent one of like, should we do any of these virtually? We kind of tried to think through it a little bit. We used a couple, well, at least one tool to kind of think about it virtually. And at least we came away with no way, not going to make sense to do mm. it offsite. So we're going to, the thing about that to me, like you said, we have to do it. It's very tight agenda because now we've got 11 people on our leadership team. And it just needs to be very structured if you're going to make it worthwhile for that many people. You think about all the mind share and the resources you've got there. You just have to run a tight ship. Um, I think also for me, when I had to lay out those meetings, like it, it helped me understand like a better kind of rhythm, I think for us as a firm of like, okay, we ended up building our strategies and OKRs and things around it. Um, so all of our kind of strategic planning and, and quarterly projects were kind of built around the rhythm of those teams. So it's one that, I mean, again, maybe for small, I'm trying to think of how we would have, when we first started, like, and again, it was just maybe call the 10, think about when we were like 20 people, like, would it have only made sense? Do you think to maybe, should you and I have maybe just done like quarterly, just kind of get away? We didn't really have a leadership team. I think twice a year. Twice. Yeah. I mean, you don't really get strategic. Like you can't get real strategic quarterly. That's you true. can do check-ins quarterly, but like you, you, for sure once a year. But I think twice a year is like what feels right. And we kind of did that with the conferences. That's true. So we were able to book in it where like we didn't do it intentionally as separate meetings, but you can pile them on to conferences. One of one one thing people can do, I know um, firms did this for ZeroCon and QuickBooks Connect. They use QuickBooks Connect as their annual meeting. Oh, okay. So if you're a 10 person firm, just fly them all to New Orleans in May. If you're a zero firm, right? Yeah. And and then have um, you know, a, a day before, don't do the day after. Don't do after. Don't do after. Um, you can do the day before where you just have your team meetings and get expectations set and then launch everybody into the conference. And so that was a group that is more doable at 10 people than it, it is that's at true. 140. So that's a very good point. Yeah. That's maybe the right way to kind of do that. Absolutely. And then it takes the pressure off the content side for you. Yeah. yeah, I think um, that's the best thing I've seen is people doing QuickBooks Connect and and, and uh, ZeroCon with their teams. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, we'll have to see. We're, we're hoping to, um, it feels right for us to kind of have these very, very intentional offsites and truly stepping out and getting away from the business a little bit, like the day to day. Like I've been surprised how much we accomplish and how much we think about and, um what's happening in the industry as a whole. And uh, I think firms should be doing that. It took us a long time, probably more than 10 years, right about 10 years before we even stepped out outside the firm, start looking at, like I think 2015, ZeroCon was our very first conference really attending. I mean, yep. we did some CPE here in town at local you know, Georgia CPA events, but otherwise that was about it. I think that was slow. That was, there probably wasn't a whole lot out there before then, but I think people are doing a better job of that now by getting out. So we'll be interested to see what other conferences and things come up. Um, cool. Anything else you want to, you want to hit today, man? No, that's easy. If you're going to go easy on us. Yeah, so. it was pretty easy. I mean, unless there's any other big news out there, you want to try to hit uh, and talk through. Um, no, I had a great, um, conversation with lil at zendu this week she's another speaking of um eo members oh, yeah uh, she's the incoming president of eo south florida south florida that's right 
So um, she's coming up for Venture Atlanta. So it's uh, she's going to be repping all the tech enabled firms and uh, that we should have better valuations at uh, um, at Venture Atlanta this year. So that was pretty cool. I have I've never I had met her once, but I hadn't really gotten to speak to her. And because my mom is Venture Atlanta, we got we got connected and um, I was trying to give her some of the tips and tricks of Venture Atlanta for whatever that's worth. And um, hopefully get to see her in person here in a couple of weeks. So but um. They, I liked what they were doing. I, I, I really felt, I, I had told you about it. I was like, oh yeah. crap. I hate people that are thinking more progressively than us. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You're so jealous. You get, I mean, it's good. You want to be around people like that, right? You want to be around people that push you. And so it's good to be around those types for sure. Yeah. Well, she was one of them. So she's a non-accountant, totally not an accountant by trade. Um, just wanted to break a, an industry. Like, I love it. Like, it's just... Like it's like everything we love about people and in, in, in her, right? So uh, you'll yeah, you'll have to. I don't know if you've I don't know if you've met her through the I've EO not. stuff. So I've not. Um, you should. Uh, oh, you won't be here um, during Metroline because you'll be in uh, uh, Sweet, Sweet World. But Sweet um, World, that's the next, yeah. Yeah. So, um, but you dig her. Like I, I, that was that was kind of one of the cool things that happened. Uh, I don't remember if it was this week or last week, but um, in the last two weeks we got together and uh, and connected. It was fun. It was a fun conversation. Well, I go on EO. Uh, we mentioned the top, just good beer. Uh, Zendu also shout out to Nicole McKenzie out in San Francisco who joined EO San Francisco. Ah, oh, yeah. Good move. Well played. Well, well played. played well played, Mac Daddy. That's a that's a good one there. So again, that's I think that's a, a we we plugged EO before, but I think it's a great place for firm owners to go oh. because it does talk about being breaking the cycle of thinking like an accountant or accounting firm. That's been a big organization for us has helped us think a little step outside the box a bit. So, yeah. And we've been doing that for a while. So to yeah. be fair, I mean, you've been doing that eight years. I did it six. About, like About so. that. So it's been a while so, for sure. So yeah. well, let's rate some beers here. Um, okay. I've got mine pulled up here. This is the uh, Tucker Oktoberfest Marzen. I brewed a Marzen last year. You and I had some of the Marzen actually when we were on our retreat last time. This is a historic, the kind of the original Oktoberfest beer. And I like it. I'm very biased toward um Local toward beers. The Tucker folks. Even though they're they're kind of got rocking more like Pilsners and things like that, real true German styles. I'm gonna go a four on this. I like it. I like it quite a bit. Good, Man, very good. You're so stuff. stingy with the four, like. I am. Oh, that's a different raider than me. I am. All right. What are you, what are you drinking again? You drink, oh, the yeah, Guinness yeah. Draft Stout. I don't know if there's only one kind of draft stout. I think that's it. Yeah. I'm going to go 375. It, it's just ah. It's just ah. I don't know if I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to buy it again, even. And Ooh. I'm a stout lover. Like, that just makes me sad. Well, what but is it? I can't take it down. I don't know what it is. It's just kind of watery. I don't know. You like really heavy beer, man. You like them like. I like them. Like you the can face. chew them and stuff like that and all that kind of stuff. But Well, I'm going to work on it. I may brew another one this weekend. I think to try to get ready for the cooler weather here. I may do. I may try to find something, a recipe for you. Um, Much appreciated. A little more your style. So we'll see. Um, just a touch of cinnamon, touch of chocolate. Or coffee, you can just yeah. coffee, do some coffee, do some chocolate, whatever that is, whatever. That's okay. Perfect for okay. Me. But uh, real quick again, as we finish this up, yeah, if you want to come hang with us, certainly have beers with us. The things we're hitting this year that you can kind of catch us at, um, I guess in order are going to be so Sweet World. Sweet World um, is going to be out in Vegas. Gusto Sweet World in Vegas. That's the next Denver. Gustonex in Denver, that's you. So yeah. you're doing those two. And then you're, I'm going to the PASBA conference in Nashville and you're tagging along so we can do uh, yeah. work yeah. stuff. And then um, we might have to extend that by a day because Thompson Routers or CCH, one of the two, is also in Nashville on Thursday. So one yeah. of our tech partners might want us to help on Wednesday or Thursday there. Yeah. So we didn't talk about that one. And then in December, QB Connect, is, QB Connect they bailed. Virtual, so virtual. that's a that's a fail. Uh, the one in Dallas, um, ensuring success in Dallas. I think that's virtual mostly. But if anyone's in the Dallas area, like Clint's, a few others down there, we may catch up with while we're down there. And that's and it going again, into the year. 
And then um, circle up for zero con New Orleans, everybody. That's all I'm saying. Like, if you only have one in your budget, just start saving up now and, Save it start, up now. and start hydrating. Right hydrate now. now get healthy get your vaccines if you haven't see if you can get a booster if you can get there figure out a way to get there is all i gotta say so yeah may in new orleans that's gonna be legit so. yeah some of us will be going even a little bit early too because you know what else is in may in new orleans yeah we don't talk about that accounting salon nerds no. jazz fast uh, and accounting salon jazz so. well yeah but jazz fast is the deal dude that's a great great i know that is the deal anyway well cheers everyone hope everyone is doing well feel free to subscribe follow leave comments and most importantly send us some local beers from wherever you are and we will be happy to talk all about you on drink what you think cheers everyone cheers <laughs>